So we're going to move right on right now. Uh, and I'd like to make sure that we have our candidates for House District 38, uh, Kelly Breen and Megan McAllister. Hi, ladies. How are you tonight? Hi, doing Hello. well. You guys both should be unmuted. Great. Um, so uh, again, uh, we'll give each of you an opportunity in alphabetical order to give a two minute opening statement. Uh, Louise will be keeping time. She'll put a card up to let you know when you're running uh, low on time and when you're out of time. So please make sure you can see her camera. Uh, Kelly, you'll be first up for an opening statement. So please go ahead when you're ready, whenever you're ready. Thanks everyone. Hi, thank you so much 11th District Dems. Um, I'm apologizing in advance as I had an emergency root canal a few days ago. Uh, so if you can't understand me, that's why. Uh, my name is Kelly Breen and I frankly, I'm here to do what I was born to do, to continue the work that I've been doing for the 64,000 people of Novi, bring it to the rest of the 38th district and finish the job that I started a few years ago. I'm the mother of two young kids married to a public school teacher, the daughter of a public school teacher, I've lived nearly my entire life in the 38th district and I graduated even from Northville High. I went to James Madison College at Michigan State where I studied public policy, political theory, and during law school I represented families and abused and neglected children while earning my law degree. My day job entails listening to people every day, come to my work with problems, and help them solve it. My night and weekend and spare time jobs, doing the same things for my constituents, going to their homes, meeting where they are to find solutions. I got into this after I did voter protection for the Hillary campaign in 2016. I literally wound up chasing people down in the parking lot of the precincts I was at because they had been erroneously told they had to go home or vote somewhere else. I saved about a couple dozen votes that night. And as I went home that night in 2016, I was feeling pretty good, thinking we're, we're gonna have our first female president. And then about the time they called North Carolina, I realized that we were headed for disaster. And so eventually I turned my phone off and I walked down, sat with my dog, had a beer and decided I've had enough. I've had enough of the sexism, the racism, the bigotry, and I decided to run for office. I'm here to finish that job and continue the work that I've been doing for the entire city of Novi for the 38th district and the people of Michigan. I'm ready. I'm your girl. I'm ready to fight for the values that we all share. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Megan, your opening statement. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Megan McAllister, and I'm running also for House District 38. That includes the Oakland County portions of Lyon Township, Northville, Novi, South Lyon, and Wald Lake. So thank you to everybody for taking some time out of your night to come here and to hear from all of us. I wanted to let you know about why I got into politics. The year was when I was studying my, for my master's program. I was going into counseling and art therapy, but I started to see how inaccessible and unaffordable mental health is. And I knew that we could not continue to allow corporations to recklessly profit on the health of our people. Coincidentally, that year was 2016, and I was also driven to do everything in my power to ensure that my children had an inclusive future in this state. Right now we're seeing with this COVID crisis and the passion of the Black Lives Matter movement, how the inequities have plagued our system and it's time to end business as usual politics. When I look at my life, I've been fortified to be able to relate to every corner of our district in all different walks of life. I know that I'm running to be a voice for our community and no politician has all the answers but instead I'm here to be an advocate and an ally for each and every one of you. I will listen, I will bring your stories to Lansing and I hope to earn your vote tonight. Great, thank you, Megan. Uh, so now we have a couple of questions for you uh, and these will also be answered in alphabetical order. You'll have one minute each to answer these questions. So try and you remember, keep it brief. Uh, can, can you make sure that Kelly's mic is uh, unmuted? If not, there we go, now she is. Okay, great. So our first question, and this is gonna be the same question that I asked uh, the last set of, of House candidates. Um, if you're elected, what is your number one priority and passion that you'll be looking forward to working on January 1st, 2021? Uh, Kelly, you're first. 
Well, I want to thank Sam Steckloff for talking about public education and for the rest of the candidates because that is a huge priority of mine. Um, but for information on that, you can see my Twitter tantrums. There's enough about my passion to fix public education there. Instead, I want to talk about an umbrella of pa one package, an umbrella of different things that we can change to help Michiganders grow and thrive. And that includes helping the middle class expand to where we had power invested in them before. That includes a package of bills that would include repealing the right to work for less wages, restoring prevailing wage, expanding the earned income tax credit, and enacting one fair wage as the people voted it to intend to work. Also, that includes incentives to bring blue and green jobs back to Michigan, focusing on sustainability and transparency. I believe with this package of bills, we will be able to restore the middle class and help our economy at the same time for the benefit of all Michiganders. Thank you, Kelly. Megan, same question. All right, so I also do believe that we have to put education first. And I think that what we have to do is to reverse that DeVos agenda. We have to make sure that we're not siphoning off those dollars, our tax dollars, to unregulated institutions. If they're taking our tax dollars, they need to be accountable to us. We do that same to our public schools. We should do the same for any of our online or charter schools. And the reason that I still am a broken record, just like every other candidate saying education is important, is because it's the true fundamental cornerstone of all of our future of our state. We've seen job opportunities go away from our state. And they say it's because we don't have the education infrastructure to bring them here. It's time that we change that. It's time that we have great public schools again to boost us up and to make us a desirable place to raise a family. Great, thank you, Megan. Um, I need somebody to unmute Kelly's mic again. We're gonna have to pause for a quick mm. Can you unmute yourself, Kelly? No. Okay. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay, great. So let's move on. Uh, the next question that we have, uh, which I'm going to, uh, again, this is a question that was from the 11th District Dems. I'm from Karen. Uh, what are your plans to improve racial justice in your community if elected? Uh, Kelly, you're first up. Great question. So um, I think we need to look at this from a couple different ways. We need to look at our criminal justice system and our mental health system as well as our housing practices. A statewide housing plan to ensure that everyone has access to, to fair and affordable housing would be definitely a priority. From our criminal justice standpoint, we have so many things that we can do better. That includes um, expunging nonviolent marijuana offenses, reattributing nonviolent crimes into civil infractions, releasing incarcerated nonviolent offenders, especially in the light of the COVID pandemic, eliminating the cash bail system, investing in resources for survivors, and seeking expanding the use of mental health care centers into urgent facilities so that people who are having a mental health crisis, knowing that a lot of this affects people of color disproportionately would be one way to go. So people are treated like uh, people who need help rather than criminals so they can go to an urgent mental health care clinic. We need to make sure that our cops are all trained in de-escalation practices and no use of chokeholds as well. Thank you, Kelly. That's time. Uh, Megan, same question to you. How will you, uh, what are your plans to improve racial justice in your community? Racial justice is extremely close to home for me. Uh, I am married to an African American man and raising biracial children, which like I said, was a large part of why I got into politics in the first place. We have to be living every single day our values. Our budgets need to be reflecting that. Our policing needs to be reflecting that. Every single piece of what we are doing needs to be reflecting how we are going to intersectionally be supporting all of our races. And I think that the way that we do that is by living those values, by promoting that, 
and by forcing the dialogue and standing tall and strong to say that this is going to be a priority, not just in one or two pieces of legislation, but as an underlying current to everything that we are doing, because it is a systemic problem, which means it cannot be solved in just one or two ways. Great, thank you, Megan. Uh, we're gonna go, uh, there's one more question here, uh, two more actually. The first one I wanted to ask, uh, this is kind of a, a different, a new one, um, but given where we are financially as a state and uh, kind of figuring out um, how we're gonna emerge from the COVID-19 crisis and, and adjust the, the challenges that's gonna present for the uh, fiscal year uh, 2021 budget, um, talk a little bit about some thoughts you have on, on what we can do to address this problem, uh, given you know the, the the realities of budgeting uh, at the state level. Uh, so first, we're going to go to Kelly. Okay, I'm already unmuted. So <laughs> COVID hit just as Novi was doing their budget. So we started with a great document, and we essentially had to tear it up and say we need to start all, all over again. We're looking at more than six billion dollar shortfall. We need to find a way so that we shift the burden of, of tax payments from individuals back in line to where it was a few decades ago and make it a, a fair and equitable system so that everyone pays their fair share. That includes reversing the Snyder tax cuts to education, as well as moving to a graduated income tax so that people who are making less pay a more representative share of their income. We need to fix federal funding with IDEA so that we are fully funding special education and so that we have to spend less money on our general fund dollars on special education so that most of the students have access to the school aid fund. And finally, we need to fix revenue sharing. Communities need to know how to plan ahead. The state needs to give them the money that they have been promised so that they can fix the problems that they have at home. And that includes play playgrounds, pipes, and public safety. Great, thank you Kelly, that's time. Megan, same question to you. Our budgets are truly a reflection of our values. Too often in our state and in our local municipalities, we have time and again kept giving all of the breaks and all of the tax abatements to those at the top. And that has created budget shortfalls in the past, and that is even worse and more highlighted now in the cir cur current circumstances. We have to make sure that we are taxing at a fair and equitable way. I believed also that we have to do a graduated income tax. And not just that we do it, but that we as representatives are the forefront and those who are going to propel a ballot initiative in order to get that to be achieved. Um, we can use that voters not politician drive and energy and get that ballot going so that we can truly get this change in a way that we can get much more uh, of an opportunity for income and revenue for our state, not just for the next couple of years in COVID, but for the you know, foreseeable future. Great. Thank you, Megan. So we're gonna bring in a question that we got from the last round of candidates and ask it to the two of you as well. Um, talk a little, little bit about your reaction to the Supreme Court decision earlier this week uh, that um, affirmed uh, protections for LGBTQ uh, employees, that they're protected from being fired for just uh, you know, who they are. Uh, Kelly, you're first. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so glad this question was asked. I, I actually had the fortune of being on the cover of a new newspaper twice within two years. The first was for a protest outside of Dave Trott's office, and the second was for the fact that Novi enacted LGBTQ protections for their employees and vendors that we worked with. I try to do what I can from my corner of the world, and I'm so pleased that we were able to expand those rights to the LGBTQ community for the people that I was elected to serve. Amending the Elliott Larson Act has got to be a priority when we get to Lansing. Love is love, no matter what. And the Supreme Court, yeah, they're leading the way right now for once when it comes to LGBTQ protections. And we have Dana Nessel to thank for that, as well as Professor Sudler at Wayne Law. I am so excited to have the opportunity to do this again for the 38th District and the entire state of Michigan when I get to Lansing to expand Elliott Larson to ensure that everybody is free to love who they love and that everybody is treated fairly and equitably in their employment. Okay. Megan, same question to you. This was a huge win for civil rights. And we also were very fortunate to have Amy Stevens, a 
a, a Michigander native, although she did pass in May, but she really helped find the way to forge a future for so many to have a greater opportunity in their future to be who they are and to be the most authentic self that they are. I believe that we also have to be focusing on intersectionality here. We have to make sure that we are continuing to support our trans you know, individuals who are from all different races and making sure that we're supporting them equally. And again, we're all kind of saying the same things here, but Elliot Larson expansions are essential. And I think that we all do agree that we have to make sure that we're putting them as a top priority so that everyone is safe and accountable and they are being given the best civil rights going forward so that we can have a more just and inclusive world. Thank you very much, Morgan. Um, if that's okay with everybody. But uh, Megan, you'll be up first to give a one minute closing statement. So I'm running for state representative because we need different voices and different backgrounds to be going into government. I am not a career politician, that is evident, but Lansing has a lot of them and we still haven't solved our problems. What I am ready to be is a committed partner for this community, to be able to be someone who will answer the calls, respond to your emails, to show up in our community in both the small and the big moments. And I'm running to represent with compassion and to put people truly first, something we have not seen here in the House District 38 in a while. And so I'm asking you to join us to take a look at McAllisterformichigan.com. And I hope to earn your vote by August 4th. So thank you all so much again. And thank you, 11th Congressional District, for putting on this forum. Thank you, Megan. Uh, Kelly, one minute for your closing statement. Thank you. So I grew up in an MEA, AFT, UAW and Teamsters family with political, uh, political opinions all around me of all stripes. And let's face it, the 38th is critical to flipping the house and giving the governor the support she needs to pass laws that reflect our values. With term limits, it's gonna be really hard. You need somebody who's ready and willing and able to do it. I'm there. I'm already doing it here in, in Novi. I, able, I spearheaded a comprehensive sustainability study for our city. I got commission, we joined a resolution to get the commissioners to put mass transit on the ballot. And I was able to get city of Novi to enact LGBTQ protections for employees. My platform is based on three principles, a healthier Michigan, helping Michiganders grow and thrive and a better functioning government. I look forward to talking about this and forging a better path ahead with all of you. And for additional information, see my website at kellybreen.com. Great. Thank you very much, Kelly. And thank you, Megan. Uh, good luck to both of you in your, your campaign. Good luck as we move towards the primaries.